continuing our journey on money habits and smart money habits that you should have um, by the time you're the age of 30 and beyond but by the time if you're if you we've talked about this before where there are things you cannot ever you've at least heard it once twice ten times in your life that i wish i knew this when i was younger so we're going to continue with number 22 the first video we had up to number 23 so we're counting down to number one and we're on number 22 and we're number 22 is get your savings start your savings spot you know start your savings spot as soon as possible do not even wait until you're an adult Sh you know understand your 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 how to save understand the value of money understand the, the 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 skills that you need you know good money management habits that you need to do you know understand um for example my my children started with their debit cards when they became teenager and my my youngest son i wasn't able to see the account and he was spending all this money on games and the, the card would be done and things like that so he learned a really good money habit from the beginning by learning by feeling the, the the aspects of not having his money when it was done and now he's so much better with money and you know he has his own investment account he's buying his stocks he's looking at those things everything is on the internet everything is available to learn you know vet the people that that you're that is teaching you about your money habits, understanding your disciplines about money. If it's not your parents and you're learning from a influencer like me, make sure that you understand, you know that the person is, is good to teach your kids money habits, teach you money habits, teach your friends the right money habits and understanding your disciplines. You know, if it's too good to be true, likelihood it is. So there's no real shortcut in doing this. It's just proper planning, proper financial planning, proper financial financial literacy, proper understanding what your habits are, understanding your good habits and your bad habits. So you can, you, you be truthful to yourself about your bad habits and you can work on those. So we all have good habits and bad habits. Our good habits are great. Bad habits we need to keep constantly be working on. We have to always be working that line. You know, the earlier you start, the better it is. History shows that. So, you know, safeguard your credit ratings. So, you know, understanding your credit score is crucial in society, you know, because it's essential to borrowing money. It's essential to securing a rental property. It's essential to get insurance. It's essential to get car insurance. It's even essential to getting a phone plan. So, you know, everything they want to know what your credit worthiness is. That is like your resume, you know. So if your resume, your credit worthiness show that you have late payments and you're not looking at what you're doing and you're not understanding what your credit is, then, you know, you're going to have issues later on. You're going to have to pay to fix those mistakes. You're going to have to pay for those mistakes. You're going to have to pay by paying higher interest. Interest is the cost of debt. So if you are not babysitting your credit and you don't understand your credit, then you're gonna have to pay for it. And having a higher interest rate on things, having a higher interest rate on a mortgage, a car, a credit card, a student loan, all these different th things, you're, you might not be able to get a phone plan or all these things they check your credit today for. Years ago, they didn't check your credit for those things. The main things they checked your credit for was housing, cars, you know, credit card, those type of things. But today they're checking your credit for everything. <laughs> So you want to make sure that you understand your credit from a young age, understanding there's something called freecreditreport.com. You can run your credit report there and see what's happening there. W once you, you, you realize you should be doing that, you should be doing that. When, when parents put their kids on their credit card accounts, their credit card accounts start reporting credit to the reporting credit bureau. My children are on my credit card account. My 14 year old was on one of my card accounts to start building his credit when he, when he was 14. So you need to be aware of all these things. Ask your parents to do it. If you're not old enough, you do it. You know, I start my kids off so they have their credit and they understand what they're doing. And now they, the, when they get older, they can apply for their own things. I don't have to co-sign because I don't like co-signing for anything. Um, maximize, talk to your parents about inheritance. 
my children talk to me about this all the time. Talk to your parents and your grandparents, mom and dad. Do you have this? Do you have that? Do you have a will? Do you have your trust? Mom and dad, you should be doing this. You should be doing this. You know, understand what the tax considerations are when it comes to inheritance. Understand that if mom, dad, or grandma and grandpa does not have trust, their information is gonna have to go through probate. It's gonna take, it's gonna be an issue for you, not them because you're going to be the one that has to deal with the probate. You're going to be the one, their, their, their ears are going to be the one. They're not going to be alive anymore. So their ears are going to be the one that's going to have to be dealing with that. So understand what your inheritance are. It's important for legacy planning, not only for the grandparents, the great grandparents and the parents, it's important for us and our children to understand what we have and how it's allocated, what the values are, how it's formed, things like that. So ask your parents and your grandparents, not that you're trying to kill them out, but it is something that you have to be aware of, you know. Embrace family benefits, you know. There are family tax benefits, benefits that ease cause of raising kids, you know, eligible dependents, circumstances, you know, different types of things that you can do. State, state and federal governments that have availability, you know, ask what's happening within your family. Ask what, you know, if your dad was in the military, your mom was in, in the military, or they, they were in a company and they were grandfathered, and there are certain things that you're entitled to. Make sure that you look into what those things are. They, everything be, with, the, with the cost of inflation, everything is so expensive today. So you want to make sure that you're getting all the benefits that you, you, you're entitled to. And if you don't look, you don't investigate, you don't ask, it's not gonna happen. Nobody's gonna bring it to you. It's not coming to you on a silver platter, you know, and don't cry a river for it, you know. Protect blended families. So the more and more we, we understand what ben, blended families require more attention, especially when you have assets before and after, when you have kids, you have exes, you have joint assets with your, with your children or your partner. You, all of that needs to be part of your legacy planning and understanding it. And you as, a, as, a, as part of the family, you guys need to be doing these things together. You need to be on, these are all things that you need to do because because when mom, dad, grandma, uncle, aunt passes away and you have to deal with all of this, it is a massive amount of time. I'm going to tell you that my dad passed away at the age of 45 and it was a royal mess because I was 22 years old. My poor mom didn't really know anything about his business. He didn't, she didn't know the house. We didn't know where his will was. At 22 years old, I didn't know anything. I, I just, it was, you know, a prayer. It was a prayer. God led me through it. I learned so much from it. And I'm telling you from experience that ha understanding your legacy, understanding what is happening, making sure that everything is in order is something that you need to do. Sometimes these are kind of hard conversations to have. I've had these conversations with my in-laws for decades and decades and decades. And finally they decided to listen to me. Um, but if, if you don't do it, it's going to be a waste of their money with the probate and a waste of the money that you're going to be inheriting if it's not done properly. Number 17 is definitely choose career wisely. Understand what career you're choosing, what you're good at. Understand your earning potential for within that career. You know, understand what the shortage is within, within society and what things are given. Like there's a chronic shortage of STEM majors. What is, what is a STEM? STEM is, is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. If you are good in one of those fields or any of those fields, that those are fields that there has been a shortage since I have been alive, especially if you're a woman. That's one of the things. There's a shortage of teachers. teachers. There's a shortage of nurses. Nurses are always in demand, especially when it comes to, um, the baby boomers who are retiring now. So that's one of the fields that, you know, so you need to understand your career path. What is a marketable degree? What are the things that you're, you need to understand about what you're doing? Yes, choosing a career that you're going to be happy in is important, but investigating what that might be before you make your mind up is also super important. You know, there's a wide array of things that you can do when, but you, you know, there's not just one type of teacher. There's 
there's hundreds of types of teachers. There's hundreds of types of, there's many different types of nurses. The STEM field is endless. You know, there's the FinTech field that's involved in STEM. So make sure that you are learning about all these different things that are happening, all these different jobs, all these different careers that are within, before you decide what you're investing your educational money in, you know. So you want to make sure that you're looking at all these different in, in, industries because new opportunities are, are coming about all the time. New job classifications, new career classifications are coming up all the time. So you want to make sure that you understand that. Number 16 is managing your loans, understanding what you know, ballooning under high inflation is, understanding when you're replaying your burden, what it is, understanding that, you know, when you get a pay raise, what your pay is when you're taking it home, so, you know, understand that when you are working in a field, not just the money that you're taking home is important. You, you have to understand the benefits, the contributions, what is the company giving you, the training, the, the, the self-improvement that, that, that they're giving you. So you want to make sure that you're understanding all of these things number 15 is good record keeping i cannot stress this enough good record keeping visibly understanding your spending and looking at your spending tracking your spending identifying and proving what your tax deduction is allowing yourself to spot any problems quickly you know um a shoebox doesn't cut it as a receipt anymore, although there is an app called Shoebox that you can use for the receipts. But there's many, many ways to save your receipts and save your records easily today than it was 50 years ago and 40 years ago and 30 years ago. So we have no excuse for under the age of 30 people today. You do not have an excuse to not keeping proper stuff. I'm a tax accountant. Before I take a gray area or a situation on a tax return that I know that there is a gray area. I back myself up with memos, laws, regs, cases. So if the IRS ever asks a question about this, about a questionable item, I know why I took it because I have all my backup. Uh, you know, as being a CPA, we have to be part attorney. We have to have our backup before we fight the case. So I have my backup just in case they ever come after us. So this is going to be, this is the second video that we're finishing up. We're going to do our third video and hopefully the final one once we're done with, we're going to start with number 14. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, feel free to give me a follow to get updated on new and upcoming episodes and listen in every Tuesday and Thursday where I teach you smart money habits so you can make better money choices with a financial goal focus.